Coming up in this video, I show how to replace a 1988 rear Fiero brake caliper with an emergency brake. I also show how to fix the emergency brake system and adjust it too. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out any parts that I use in the links in the description. This only applies to 1988 Fieros. 88 Fieros had slightly different brake systems altogether. Right now you can't really find new or remanufactured brake calipers. The only place that I found that will rebuild them is the Fiero store. You can send them in and they'll rebuild it for you for about 150 bucks. Rear Fiero brake calipers are actually pretty unique. They only go on one car and they have an emergency brake. If you're okay with removing the emergency brake, you can actually find remanufactured front calipers instead. If you're doing brakes, I highly recommend changing out your brake lines with some steel braided brake lines. These things make a world of difference in how the brakes feel. First, go ahead and shock the front tires and then jack up the rear of the car. Use the engine cradle as a jack point and then put jack stands under these jack points in front of the rear tires. This process will require bleeding the brakes. Before we get started, go ahead and a couple days in advance, start spraying the brake bleeders with some penetrating oil such as Croil. Take the rubber caps off of the bleeders first or else they'll soak up oil. Then we're going to remove the emergency brake cable and spring. Go ahead and grab some pliers and just grab the end of this cable here and work it out of this notch. Then you're going to have to compress the spring a little bit. These pliers can also work well for this and just yank it off. And take out this 19 millimeter bolt that holds the caliper and the bracket for the e-brake cable on. Set the e-brake cable to the side. Grab an oil pan and go ahead and remove the brake line. Mine happens to be an 11 millimeter. Set this banjo bolt and the crush washers to the side. Ideally, you don't reuse the crush washer. I'm going to be flushing my brake fluid here so I don't care how much leaks out. If you want to speed up the process of the draining, you can go ahead and pop the hood and then take the cap off of the brake master cylinder. Since I'm flushing my brake fluid, I need to get rid of as much as I can up here. I'm going to use a spray bottle here, take it apart, and then spray it into the bottle. Try not to get any brake fluid on anything because it could mess up the paint. Over time, brake fluid can absorb moisture and that actually leads to loss in performance. It's recommended to change this out regularly. You can see here that this fluid is pretty dark in color, meaning it's pretty old. The front and the rear brake lines are supplied with slightly separate reservoirs. Empty both out and bleed them all the way around the car. To get the brake caliper off, you'll need a T55 Torx bit. There are two large bolts on the back of the caliper. Now the caliper should be free. You might just have to work it off because the brake pads are squeezing a little bit on the rotor. Go ahead and tilt this down to drain the fluid out. Then replace the banjo bolt and the caliper bolt for safekeeping. Since I'm replacing this caliper completely, I won't have to do some of the regular stuff you do when you change pads. You'd have to normally hammer these pins out in order to change the pads on this 88 brake setup. Also, you'd want to compress the cylinder again with a big C-clamp or a brake clamp in order to push it back in to fit the new pads. Or you might want to take this time to inspect the seals around your caliper. I'm going to install everything new and fresh, so this entire caliper assembly is just going to go. The remanufactured brake caliper comes with a brand new spring, brake pad clips, brake pad pins, banjo bolt, and bleeder screw. I'm going to put some brand new brake pads on. First, slide these dowel pins into these holes on the outside of the caliper. The pad with the squeaker goes on the inside of the caliper. It has two dowel pins on it to align with the caliper piston. Stick the brake pads in with the pad material facing it inward at each other. Then slide the dowel pins through both sets of brake pads. You're going to need to hammer the dowel pins in place once you get all the way to the other side. It's best to use a brass punch on these to avoid damaging the pins. If you've got an old caliper and they're not sliding in very nice, you might want to clean out these holes. Try some brake cleaner and then some sandpaper or something. Next, we've got to get these tricky retainer clips in. All you really have to do is slide them underneath each side of the pins and then snap the clip over the top of the brake pad. It might be useful to use some pliers. Heat for both sides. Then slide each brake pad to the outsides of the brake caliper. Be sure to double check that these pins are sliding properly. If not, they might need to be rebuilt, resealed, and re-greased. Now it's time to reinstall the brake caliper. Make sure that the pads are all the way spread out so that they have enough clearance to go around the rotor. You had to slightly slide the sliders back a little bit to get this thing to fit over the caliper holes. Make sure the bleeder screw is pointed up. Then line up the holes for the Torx bolts again and tighten the Torx screws to 74 foot-pounds. Now take the top caliper bolt back out and reinstall the emergency brake bracket. Here's a picture of the service manual description on how to change their e-brake cables out. 
excited to get all new parking brake connection hardware. These two connectors will connect all three parking brake cables, one to each parking brake and one to the lever. Now I'm going to repair my e-brake cable. The cable on the driver's side of the car has snapped off the end that is supposed to thread into this brake adjuster. Removing the cable on this side is pretty much exactly the same as the other side. Take some pliers and release the ferrule. You will have to take the spring off. There are several metal tabs sticking out that you will have to squeeze to release this cable from the bracket. Installing the new one is simple as just threading it through the hole and making sure that the locking tabs snap in. The passenger side e-brake cable and the main handle pull cable attach together with this. If it's a bit tight, some snap ring pliers might be useful for loosening it up. It helped me to put vice grips on the cable and pull it through. The passenger side e-brake cable and the main handle pull cable attach together with this. Next, you're gonna have to thread the driver's side e-brake cable end into the adjuster. In order to get enough slack, go ahead and pull on both sides of the cable to see if you can get the adjuster in the place you need it to be. Once you have at least five or six threads on, go ahead and pull the ferrule end back into place. Now's the fun part where we get to wiggle the spring on and reattach the emergency brake cable. Even if you're not hooking up your parking brake, these springs must be installed to ensure proper operation of your calipers. Make sure the cable is pulled all the way out as far as it will go. Put the spring around the emergency brake cable, then grab the cable through the spring with the pliers and thread it into place on the lever. Take some pliers and bend the snot out of the spring, then locate the spring over the lever. Take some vice grips, grab the lever, and compress it back a little bit. Grab some more pliers and pull the cable into place. Make sure that the spring is seated between these two clips on the bracket and going over this nub on the lever. To get this old fluid out, I'm going to reinstall the cap on the brake master cylinder and then depress the brake pedal until I have absolutely no pressure at all. Make sure you put copper washers between the banjo bolt and the brake hose and then between the brake hose and the caliper. Tighten the brake hose banjo bolt to 33 foot pounds. I might do a little bit less just because this is aluminum. Let the copper washers do the work. Before we get started bleeding the brakes and pumping them, I'm opting to replace all of my brake bleeders. I'm going to coat the threads with some anti-seize too so that they don't get stuck. Do not coat the tip of the brake bleeder with anti-seize, only the first couple of threads. One trick to get a seized brake bleeder free, weld a little bit of material to the tip and the heat should break it loose. Be sure to use a six point socket. Tighten all the bleeder screws down just hand tight. Go ahead and fill up the brake master cylinder with fluid again. I'm going to use this Valvoline DOT 3 and 4 brake fluid. DOT 4 brake fluid has slightly higher boiling point than DOT 3. You can see here that the new brake fluid has a lighter yellow color. Since we can't get all the brake fluid out of the lines immediately, what you're going to do is look for the dark color to turn to this light color while you're bleeding the brakes. That way you'll know that the system is flushed. On a Fiero, the furthest brake away with the longest line between the master cylinder and the brake is the driver's side rear. To bleed brakes properly, you will always bleed the furthest one away first. Grab a 10 millimeter wrench and open up this bleeder valve and then have a buddy start pumping the brakes. Go ahead and loosen up the brake bleeder until fluid comes out and then tighten it back up again, have them pump the brakes again and repeat. You might want them to pump the brakes a little bit very slowly once you get rid of most of the air so that there's a little steady stream of fluid coming out. Then once they reach the bottom, tighten it back up and repeat. Then move to the rear passenger side and repeat. Then move up to the front passenger side and repeat. And then last, move over to the driver side front and repeat. Make sure you have your oil pan underneath because this will leak out a bunch of brake fluid. Try not to get the brake fluid on any of your brake seals. If you replace a lot of fluid in your system, you might want to refill your brake brake master cylinder every couple of minutes. Tighten the bleeder screw to nine and a half foot pounds. Then once you finish up, go ahead and replace the caps on the bleeders. They're really important for keeping it from seizing. Finally, fill up and cap off the brake reservoir for good. Apply force to the brake pedals three times out of approximately 175 pounds. Apply the parking brake at least three times. Make sure it's been fully released by turning the ignition on and ensuring that the brake light does not show up. You may have to pull down on the parking brake lever to ensure slack is in the system. Check to make sure both parking brake levers are on the stops on the back of the calipers. If they're not, go ahead and loosen the brake adjuster. 
or check for binding in the cables. Tighten the parking brake adjuster until either the left or the right lever barely stop making contact with the stop. Use a six millimeter wrench on the flat on the threaded rod and a 16 millimeter wrench on the nut. Turns out this is a great application for this ratcheting wrench with the tooth here. Then loosen it so it goes back to making contact barely with the stop. Then go ahead and put the wheels back on and by torquing the lug nuts in a star pattern and doing them to 100 foot pounds for aluminum rim. You may have to lower the car partially onto the ground to get this. Then go ahead and test out the parking brake lever to make sure it does not allow the car to move. The parking brake lever should not extend more than six ratchet clicks. Repeat this process as needed. Make sure that the brake pedal is really firm. Lower the car back down to the ground and go for a test drive. Make sure to take it very slowly and just test it out a little ways. Well, that's all for this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, check out any parts in the description.